Hey there, everybody. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate everybody's interest. Um, sorry this video took a while to make. I was supposed to do it last week. I've just been so tied up. But uh, I'm going to do my best to try to share as much knowledge as I can today. The video, you know, the reason I'm doing it is I decided to get a lot of requests, a lot of questions, which I'm totally fine with. But I figure I'd make this video and kind of give everybody, you know, all the information at one time so it can help them expedite getting their cart to where they want it to be and uh, just kind of streamlines everything. So it may be a boring video for, for some of you, but I'm hoping that uh, everybody will appreciate it. I'm going to do my best to kind of just point out the things I've done to this cart and uh, how I, you know, kind of got to this point and kind of just explain some of the ins and outs that, uh, you know, I've figured out through researching these carts a lot. So without further, further ado, let's get started. Um, well, I want to say this quickly. I always say this, this is just my, you know, what I do to my cart, I'm not telling anybody to do this. I'm not advising that they should. You need to talk to your dealer about everything you do. You got to look into safety risks and warranty ramifications. Uh, Please don't do as I do. I'm just telling my story. And uh, I know that goes without saying, but I like to make sure I, I say it in every video. Um, and another thing, if you watch through the whole video, at the end, I'm going to give you a tip on the Navitas install. There is uh, something that, that may or may not happen to you, but if it does, I'm going to make sure I, I explain it. And it just kind of kind of helps you figure it out faster, I guess, with me giving you this tip. So I, I hope it helps somebody. Um, so here we go. The first thing, this is the Icon I-60L. It's a lifted Icon cart. It, when you buy this cart, they kind of limit it to 25 miles an hour. If you bought it non-lifted, it would probably go 28 or 30. Um, but out of the factory, they typically go 25 because they're lifted. They don't want people you know, having accidents around corners and stuff. So once again, it's a safety precaution. The cart, if you're not familiar with Icons, uh, it comes pretty much loaded, um, kind of almost what you see here. It doesn't come with a sound bar. Um, it does come with rear view mirrors, just not the ones with the lights in them like mine uh, that we installed. Um, it does not come with a rear view mirror. And um, it, it didn't come with these tires. I'll explain them in a minute, but it does come with these rims. Um, but, but they're great. Um, what's great about these cars, they come with seat belts on all the seats. Uh, they come with these nice pedals and... It doesn't come with that gauge right there. That's my battery gauge for my lithium battery. But you get this gauge. Uh, my battery gauge is non-existent anymore. That's why I have that gauge down low. But the speedometer is what's awesome about it. I think all carts should have that. And you get your mileage, so you know when to rotate your tires. Um, so that's pretty much a little bit about how these carts come. Mine's being a 21, they don't really go by year, but you know the differences in some of them. The 21, come with tr it came with Trojan batteries. I bought mine in December 2020. Um, I, Trojan batteries were great. I saw a difference between the I-40 I had. I had a, a lifted I-40 before with US batteries. The Trojans were awesome, but one night we went on a long ride. We come back, we forget to charge. Next morning, go on a long ride. And man, this thing was limping along, it was scary. Um, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about there. So I, I just decided I needed to get lithium. And I began the journey of trying to figure out what to do. Oh, this is my dog, Mo. She goes everywhere I go. So I was trying to figure it out. And I mean, I researched the heck out of it. You have no idea. And I found um, this guy in, a form, in the like, icon form named Charles. Now he's a friend. He's a super guy. He told me about his Roy Pal. It's an S51160. And so I started, you know, by the time I had got all this other information, this was the battery to get at the time. Okay. Now there's other options and I'm not saying they're better. My, my battery is awesome, but I'm just saying at that time I had no choice. And a lot of people were having problems with Roy Pals. You'll hear that. It's because they were using smaller batteries for the most part. It can happen with this bigger battery, but you've got to be like, have a lot of hills, a lot of weight on your cart that this BMS issue could happen. Everybody talks about it. It's another story. I've had zero of those issues. But now if you were to buy one, so I bought mine from a dealership. Uh, I had to travel a few hours to get it. If you want one of these batteries, the best thing I can tell you, tell you is call dealerships everywhere and ask them if they have the S51160 for Roy Pal. And if they have the P version, there are other companies selling batteries too. The best suggestion I can do is find one that has, goes about 140 or 150 amp hours, just like this is 160 amp hours. 
That's the best advice I can give you on the BMS issue because I've had none of that and I push my cart to the max. So I had this lithium battery. Uh, I did it, Charles talked me through it, but I wanted to get it tightened up and get some other stuff done. So this guy named Justin Radar in the Icon Forum, he's a really, really good mechanic, very talented. He came out, tightened everything up. He actually put in two AWG battery or power cables. Those cables, I think, is one of the reasons I don't have any issues. It looks like overkill, but I'm telling you, it gives me peace of mind. So I've got the two, I, I got those cables put in and replaced or whatever with those power cables. And then another thing Justin did, he tweaked some of the program, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But he also made it that I could charge using my original Icon cord. So I just plug it in like I would when I bought the car. So I wasted money on that charger that I bought for this lithium battery, which makes me kind of sad. But anyhow, so that's what's awesome. Now that programming that he did, he programmed this, my charger, not the programming we're going to talk about in a minute. It's a different cable, a different scenario. And so don't think those are the in and this, of the same. They're not. When you try to program with your own cable, we're talking about the controller. Okay. So what he did is very unique. You know, you have to find a dealer to help you do what I'm doing, charging uh, using my original cable. So I did that. Then the very next thing I did was I went and bought road hop tires from golf cart tire supply. I wanted street tires and you know, I thought they wouldn't look great. I was worried they wouldn't be as aggressive, but these tires look fine. Um, there's a glare in here, but they're, they're actually 23 by 10 0.00 R 12s. Okay. And they're, they're a nice ride. I think they give me a couple extra miles per hour. It just rides so nice. It's smoother for my wife. It's just a, a very, very nice thing. Um, so I did that. Next thing I did, um, if you go to the Buggies Gone Wild forum, there's a user in there named A-Train who is super helpful. He's helped so many people. But he has a couple of threads in there, and one of them is how to make a programming cable. So if you want a cable, you want to do it yourself, not your dealer, at your own risk, Go in there and watch the video. I opted to buy one from him when he was making them. I suggested if you make a couple and I buy one, he happily did it. And so I bought mine that way. So my cable, which I don't use anymore, we'll get into that at the end, but um, you plug it in here and into your laptop and the software is in the Buggy's Gone Wild form, probably somewhere around his threads. You can download the software, okay? A lot of people have done that. I wasn't the first one to do it, but he did a great job on the cable and I was able to program my cart. For those of you asking what settings I used in the programming, uh, basically the best thing I can tell you is go, I think it's line 45 and 46. My settings there are 7,000 and 4,500. 45 is like 7,000 and uh, 46 is 4,500. You're going to say, well, there's limits. It's li limited to 6,000. A lot of you know that. Go in the, back into A-Train. He talks about how you can change the software. All you're doing is editing a CSV file to where you can change it to the maximum settings. So we changed it to 7,000 as the max. So I was able to change that. So that is the big key of getting up to 37, 38, at least with my cart. Maybe it's my street tires, my lithium, having that setting, you know, Basically, I'm just maxed out and the motor is my limit. And I don't know if you'll get that high, but you should get to 35 or something if you're at 7,000, I would hope. But those, I'm not sure how much I'm getting out of these tires. I think they're helping a lot. The torque and everything is just fantastic. Um, another thing that I did after that, just want to point it out, I got these mirrors off of Amazon. A-Train has a thread on how to install them, so just look there if you want to put them on. I love that they light up when you put the blinker on. There's the red arrow would pop up. Uh, I've seen people discuss this. I know it sounds crazy pointing this out, but they don't know where to put their garage remote. I use Gorilla two-sided mounting tape. It says it holds up to 30 pounds or something. You stick it on there, the remote sticks to it, and at first it seems like it's not gonna stick, but then it does, and that thing is locked on. I've even taken it off to, to go do something with the cart, come back, put it right back on with the same tape. It's weird. It doesn't ever, I don't ever worry about it falling. So that's been cool. This fan's junky. I'm going to replace that. I just put it there just the other day just because it's getting so freaking hot. I'm going to come up with a better scenario. Um, I mentioned, I want to mention every little thing I've done to this. Um, I put this Echo X gear, uh, the one that's wired on here. I don't want to charge anymore. I'm tired of worrying about charging my speaker. 
So I put this up a couple days ago. Sounds great, looks great. This handle, kind of proud of it. When I first got our first icon, I bought these handles. There's a set of two on Amazon. And just put it over your little handle here and it gets, lets your wife uh, have a better reach when she gets in and out. And when she's riding, she just holds on to that handle. It's really cool. And there's actually a two pack. That's the way I bought them. The brand was, uh, I think, Sportfish. And um, it's Sportfish Automotive Adjustable Standing Aid Safety Hand Vehicle. Once again, maybe a meaningless detail, but I'm just trying to help you guys. I bought some foam that went underneath it and it helped me a lot to putting it up there. I don't want to be beating up the handle. The original handle so uh, that was good um, let me see we talked about the software um, the Navitas everybody's talking about the Navitas so I'm gonna give you my just uh, God's honest truth um, you know you spend I, I think I spent eight something on mine uh, I put in three orders for this thing just because they kept getting back ordered so I kept trying different places um, I tried uh, Buggies Unlimited. Then I called Flight Systems International because that's who Navita said to call. And then ultimately bought it from uh, Plum Quick, believe it or not. And I noticed the, the item showed up from Flight Systems, which is ironic because I canceled Flight Systems the day that I knew Plum, Plum Quick was, come, was sending theirs. And uh, Flight Systems says, oh, we just got ours in, but we'll go ahead and cancel your order. It was just weird that that happened. So I don't know what their situation is with Plum Quick, but the order actually came from Flight Systems. Um, if you call one of those companies I just mentioned, you can probably find the uh, Navitas for Icon. Uh, it's like code number 10, 10- um, I'll put it in the comments of the video, but you'll know it's this one because uh, I'll give you the exact part number you're searching for. About 800 and something dollars. Uh, guy at Plum Quick and Sales was awesome. And it came really, you know, it came probably within two, three days at the most. Arrived on a Saturday, I think and um, had it installed. Now I talked about Justin Radar who was nice enough to come down and uh, help with the battery and everything. He was just too busy to get here in time to do the Navitas. So I had another guy named Sal do it um, just cause he could do it sooner. And, and Sal uh, did a good job with it. It's, it's fantastic installing the Navitas. Um, a lot of people ask, what, what do you do? I didn't do it. I was just around in the garage and stuff when he did it, came to my house to do it. But um, I can send you a picture if that helps showing you how mine ended up looking. But we did buy also a solenoid that was up to 700 amps. Justin had suggested that as well, that you need to get a bigger solenoid if you're going to be dealing with 600 amps versus 350 on the original Toyota controller we have. Uh, I know I kind of got off base there, but the question was, do, would I suggest buying it or would I do it all over again? And honestly, I don't think I would. If you can find a P battery or a battery you're not worried about uh, having a BMS issue, I mean, there's just been so much talk about Roy Powell, the batteries doing that, that you just always have it lingering in your mind. And so for me, I wanted the Navitas because I drive this car hard. I, we go fast all the time, pedal to the metal. I mean, it's nuts. With a lithium battery, you don't have to think about you know, how far you can go. Like this gauge goes up to 10, 10 bars, and I've literally never got below four. And we drive miles and my, I mean, 30 miles. It's crazy. It just, it's nuts. I probably, I could probably go 75 miles, I think on this battery, but regardless, the Navitas gives me peace of mind. When you go into the app, you tell it what battery you have. And because you tell it what battery you have, it knows how much voltage is the max voltage you can, the battery can take before it does a BMS issue. And so it takes that problem out of the way. And people can say, oh, it can still happen. Okay. Maybe it can still happen, but odds are it's not going to happen. And I got a good battery. And so I'm fine with it. I, I guess I shouldn't say I wouldn't do all over again. I probably would buy it again. But for the average user, let's say you have a P battery, like this, this guy I know in the forum, super nice guy. He has the P battery. Um, I don't know if I, I just stick with what you have because if you change the settings in the Toyota controller, even though it's only 350, I guess, amps, I literally went as fast as I am with the Navitas. I go 38 because in the Navitas, I'm not scared about BMS. So my RPMs, instead of 7,000, I've got running at 8,000. And then if I put six people on the card, I put it down to 7,000 because Navitas makes it that easy to change it. It's not that easy on the, you know, on the icon software. So that's one of the reasons you're buying the Navitas. But everybody thinks Navitas is just, oh, you get it. Now everything's fast. This card's fast without it. It would go the same speeds, believe it or not. If you would just tweak the heck out of the settings on the current controller you have, if you can get a cable and get the software and everything installed. 
Um, once again, maybe I just proved why you get them to Vetus. It's totally up to you. Um, I just, there's forums, not just for an Icon Golf Cart. I noticed this when I was doing the research. A lot of people are like, ah, not that, listen, free, uh, Navitas controllers are awesome. They are good at what they do. Those engineers are fantastic. The tip I'm going to give you in a second is proof of it. They just know what they're doing. But, you know, $1,000, you know, do you want to spend it or do you want to wait for your controller? That's the thing. If you're pushing it so hard in the settings, you never know how long your controller is going to last, let alone your motor. So that's where the Navitas, you know, at least you don't have to worry about the motor get the, the controller getting too hot. That thing can definitely handle it. Uh, what, even if the Toyota maxed out in its settings, uh, can do the same speed. You don't know what damage you, if you're hurting it. That's just, I don't know, just a thought. So that's, you know, here's the, the part number I said I would give that to you for the Navitas. Um, 10-000890-14. That is what you need if you want uh, the Navitas for Icon, okay? Um, the tip I was going to give you, um, I was going to share when you're doing the Navitas control, the controller install, once you have everything set up, you're gonna think maybe, Alex, some people will have it too, some it won't, but you're gonna think that something might be off. You may not have con con connected it all correctly. But what it is, is inside this, uh, when you're looking at the app, once you connect your controller to the app and you sign in, you'll see that there is something that says key error, like it doesn't see a key in the ignition, something weird like that. It's basically, you're thinking, oh, well, something's off. That error is why the cart's not moving. So the way to fix it is you call Navitas, go to technical support. If they're open at that time, those guys are fantastic. Leave a message if they don't answer. They'll call you back. They are very thorough. Those engineers get on the phone with you, and they figure it out with you. And basically, they told me that because wiring harnesses are different going across the Icon and the Advanced EV lineup, I guess they've used different harnesses of some sort. It threw off the way they made this programming. So they set it up in the developer options of the, of the app that you can change hey turn that key thing off and so when you call them they ask for your username they change your app to where you can get into some uh, other writable uh, features in the app like advanced stuff and you'll go in and you'll turn that key error off and I think another error pops up at least it for me and another guy that asked me about it and you go turn that error off and with that advanced access you turn those errors off and next thing you know the cart will run fine Perfect. Um, that is, uh, uh, that's something that I hope helps somebody so you don't go crazy trying to figure it out. Uh, and then after you fix it a little bit later, you know, your app, it'll look the same, but you won't have the same access to that area again because they'll turn it off at Navitas unless you're a dealer. So I hope that was something that was beneficial. If you need more help on programming, I'll always help you guys. Just send me a message and I'll give you more details. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Have a great day. Be safe.